So this is video series 7B uh, for using Scratch. And this is a more advanced section, 7B. So um, this is for those people who are up for a challenge. The difficulty here is that we're going to use some of the new features built into Scratch 2 that didn't exist in Scratch 1. Um, right now we've got cars driving across only one car and it would be fairly simple just to duplicate these cars and give them a different starting point. But we're going to try and use the clone feature which is really awesome in the new uh, version of Scratch. But it's got a couple of strange hiccups. So first of all, if I hit the green flag, these are all working. Yes, they are. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually separate um, my, and I'm in my red car right now. So this is the red car that I'm going to start with first. And what I want to do is I want to create a, a vehicle here and a vehicle here and a vehicle here. And then they will drive across the screen using the same code base that we already have. But uh, in order to do this, we kind of have to learn a few things about code, about clones. So this clone here, the first thing I'm going to do is actually hide it, which sort of doesn't really make any sense, but it's not going to do anything. It's just the um, object that we're going to clone over and over again. By the way, if you're looking for the clone options, they're under control, under the uh, control palette. And there's three new choices. One is when I start as a clone, one is create a clone of myself, and then delete this clone. So that's where kind of where we're going to, those three pieces are what we're going to use. I'll just leave them there for now. And what we want to do first off after the green flag is clicked is this vehicle is going to hide and then it's going to control or establish some clones. So the, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to repeat a number of times. So in this case, we're going to repeat three times. Um, you can, you know, try out different combinations to see what works for you, but I've found that three works best for me. And so I'm going to create three clones of myself right off the bat, and I want to give them some specific locations to go to. I also found it effective that after you create a clone, just give it a short wait time, uh, 0.1 or 0.1 seconds, I find to be very effective. You can use smaller numbers if you want. And the other thing is that we don't want them all to just stack up on top of each other. So I'm going to create a new data value called start at x. Okay, and just I'm just going to recreate it just really quickly so that you can see um, how I make it. So I make a variable. I'm only going to use it for this sprite. So I'm not going to use it for any of the other vehicles. And I'm going to call it um, at start at x and then hit OK. So there's my start at X. It, it now looks like this, and I don't really want it to show up, so I hide it. Um, and then at the very beginning of this, uh, we're going to set start at X, and I'm going to set it to 240. Uh, 240, oh, if I can type, there we go. Um, so 240, and 240, if you look at uh, the X value right here, that should be right about on the edge. So I'm going to do one at 240 and another one here and another one here and then new ones will be created off the screen and drive through. Um, so once it starts at 240, the next thing I want to do is I want to change it. So the first one's going to come through at 240 and then I want to change it by, I've experimented with this and I find a negative 160. So I'm going to subtract 160 so it should come in right about 80 which is right around here somewhere. The next one will, and then the next one will come in uh, 160 beyond that, so at negative 80, and then one off the screen. So that just is what I've found effective for me. And uh, once we've done all that, I'm just going to add another wait, and I'm just going to leave a really, really short wait time. And uh, this is where I'm going to add more blocks of code later, but I just want to make sure that everything is set up correctly first. So now I'm going to ask the question, when I start as a clone, so create a clone of myself. So when I start as a clone, I should go to um, an XY location. And I need to know what this location is. So the Y value of negative 96, that's this value right here uh, as it goes across. But the X value, I want it to go to start at X. So I go to my data. I grab this sort of oval start at X and I put it into the X spot. Okay, so once I've done this, then 
what I had here for the code before, I still need this if touching the frog, then tell the frog that they're dead. And I still need to change x by 2, yes. But this base of code right in here, so I'm just going to put that back. But this base here, if touching the edge, then do all these things. I don't actually want to, um, to, to do that. What I want to do instead is I want to, instead of having a forever loop, I want to have a repeat loop here. Okay, so I'm going to throw this forever away. And instead, I'm going to go to the control tab and I'm not going to repeat it so many times as much as I'm going to repeat until. Okay, and this is what I'm going to repeat until. And then I've got my code base in here. And then at the bottom, then I'm going to say delete this clone once I've driven off the edge. Okay, and I can tell that I've driven off the edge by the x value of the car, or sorry, yes, the x value of the car. If the x value of the car um, goes all the way off the edge, then I know that it can safely be deleted and it won't cause any other problems. Okay, so, uh, and the only other thing here was about the next costume, but we, we can worry about costumes and such like as that later. So I can throw that one away. And now I have to figure out, the hardest part I have to figure out is how do the, I do this repeat until. So this is one clone driving across the screen. And when its X value gets out here somewhere, I want it to delete itself using this delete this clone. So here's, here's the hard part. Step number one is that I want to check to see if the value of start at x, so I've gone to the operators and grab in, grabbed a uh, greater than sign, and I've gone to data and grabbed start at x. And so what I want to know is, is start at x greater than a number? And in this case, I'm going to try out 260. You may find that different shapes of vehicles require different numbers here, otherwise they'll get hung up because uh, Scratch only lets you drive so far off the edge of the screen and then it just sort of freezes the object there. So I'm going to try 260 for right now. So repeat until, um, oh, you know, I worked really hard to create start at x. That is totally not where start at x goes. Not even close. Uh, what that should be is that should be the x position. Okay. So what I want to know is I want to know is the x position of this clone greater than 260. So I apologize there. That that should say x position. And let's Oh, I I I'm I'm so I'm, I'm all fired up. I'm I'm getting ahead of myself here. First of all, let's separate these. Um and uh there. So let's separate this. So when I create a clone, go to this location, point in that direction and then stop and then we won't worry about the movement quite yet. Sorry, getting ahead of myself here. So Create this, ah, and you know what I forgot to do? I hide the master and then I need to show the clones. Silly, silly, silly. So uh, go to that, show that, there we go. There we go, okay? So I've got three clones that have now magically appeared and because I've separated this, they're not moving yet. So let's create stop. And by the way, as soon as you hit stop, the clones all disappear. So it makes it difficult to troubleshoot sometimes. Okay, and there go the three clones driving off the screen. All right, so now what I wanna do is I want to create a continuous, I wanna use this code area right here and create a continuous number of clones and then every time they drive off the screen, they'll delete themselves, okay? So instead of having that teleport action now, I've just got clones, they drive one way and then they delete themselves. So how am I gonna do that? Well, I'm going to um, right now just have a forever. I'm gonna change this obviously later on because there's lots of possible things that need to change, but I'll leave that forever. And the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a wait until um, just to make it a little bit more fancy because I wanna make sure that these these vehicles don't continuously keep creating themselves um, and driving when the frog is dead. So I'm just going to create this and I'm going to create, I want to wait until the frog is alive. And we know that the frog is alive when frog is dead. 
is set to zero. Okay, and actually I'm going to duplicate that because that's that's a pretty awesome line of code right there. And basically what I'm going to say is that all of these things, they should not change, they should not move, and they should not create new ones until the frog is alive. And so every time the frog is alive, I'm going to create a new clone of myself. Create a clone of myself. And uh, the last thing I need to do is I need to figure out another wait time. So before we kind of put locations with x values, but now what we're going to do is we're going to space them out by using a wait time. And I've been experimenting with mine, and I think 1.8 is going to be the perfect wait time for mine. And so that will create a new um, car that should appear somewhere around here. And then it will just sort of drive onto the screen as this clone right here and then carry on until it deletes itself. So let's try this out and see how we do. Look at that. Okay. Now these guys here are way too close together. There's no way a frog could get through all of that. So let's hit stop. So this wait 1.8 seconds, I'm not sure what I was testing it on, but obviously it wasn't this. So let's bump that up to 3.6. Uh, 3 36 would take way too long. So let's bump that up. And oh, I know, I was using it at the speed of three and now we're at the speed of two. All right, so. Uh, see, now we've got a little bit wider of a gap. So it takes a little bit of experimentation. I'll set that back down to 3.3. See if that can give me a more consistent gap. Uh, still a little bit wide. So let's set it down to three seconds. Okay, so this is how we experiment with um, the different spacings and everything. So for instance, if I want to get the, the frog, can I get the frog through here? Yes, I can. And then if you don't like it the way that the front half of that vehicle appears, just make sure that your um, start at X value is, is uh, set to be off the screen. I didn't really worry about that right now, but uh, um, it's easy enough to configure. So now we've got the clones working for the vehicle in one direction. And again, I press stop so my clones have all disappeared, but I can just as easily uh, press the green flag and, and they come back. And this is just a really easy way of um, creating lots of vehicles. And the other thing too is that if I get killed, notice how all of these vehicles here waited Now you'll notice here that the wait times, this is not a very good science, but the wait times here, sometimes they're close together, sometimes they're far apart. Um, let's see if I can get through here. Oh, not so much. So you experiment with it how you want and uh, get these clones working. This is again, the more advanced version. So uh, have some fun with getting clones working and let us know. Uh, feel free to leave a message um, either on comment on YouTube or send a, a comment in if uh, you have any trouble with getting clones working. They are by far one of the hardest things to understand, and uh, but the coolest thing of the new Scratch too.